What's going on? Daniel, Mr. Quibble Racing. Today we are going to talk about the Chinese aftermarket cylinders. This also kind of overview some of the issues with uh, cylinder work cylinders as well. But talking cylinders in general, what to look out for, why most of the stuff on the market is junk, and um, what you can do to either fix that or uh, get away from it. So we're going to start with kind of the base thing here is you see this flat area on the side of the cylinder. Any of the cylinders that have this are Chinese cylinders. They all come from the same foundry. Uh, some have even, you can kind of see the outline of this and that are filled in. Um, that still show that outline, it means it's off the same casting. So all these are very cheap cylinders uh, and they all kind of have the same problems. So if you see this, most of like, if you look on eBay, most of the pictures won't show this side of the cylinder. And for that reason, is there are Chinese cylinders. They don't want you to know that they're Chinese cylinders. And there you go. Another indicator is most of the aftermarket cylinders you'll see do not have this portion threaded where this is just a solid boss with no hole in it yet. Uh, some of the retailers will drill and chop that hole or uh, tap in a brass fitting to try and differentiate. It's all the same cylinder. Basically, this cylinder is the same as the Grizzly cylinder, and they don't go through the process. The Grizzly doesn't have this vent hose for the oil line. So, that's a little bit on identification of what you're looking at. Most of these have that lighter color to them but that's the main uh, visual thing is that flat area there so issues with this cylinder that we've ran across over the years I'll kind of overview um, a little bit of everything we've seen and why these will have so many uh, gasket issues so starting at the top let's see if that helps at all. Starting on the top of the cylinder, this cylinder has been ran and it did blow a head gasket and it blew it for two reasons. So one reason here is I cleaned up the deck of this cylinder a little bit but you can see let's see there you go right next to this water jacket here See that dark area? That is because that was a low spot in the cylinder. As we rotate, kind of cleans up through here. But a lot of these, for whatever reason, have a low spot next to this uh, water jacket. This is on the uh, exhaust side. A lot of them have that issue where they have a low spot right there. Just right out of the right out of the box. So if you take a brand new one and you surface it, you'll see a long, a low spot there. Uh, another reason why this blew the head gasket is because the gasket that came with these this kit is very poor quality. It looks like a comedic gasket and it's not. Some of the retailers do include an actual comedic brand gasket with it but if it's not branded Kinetic, they are quite a bit cheaper quality uh, they just don't hold up as well so um another thing i'll show you on the next thing is this will be a little bit hard to see on camera but these cylinders have a radius here from the bore to the deck, there's a radius where it's not a sharp edge, it's rounded. Now what that does is the gasket will stick over this edge into the bore and the gasket itself will get a hot spot because um, 
it's just sticking out there waiting for some heat to attract to it and that causes detonation and other issues but also it eats up when you have a radius here your gasket is no longer sealing to the edge and that compression area and sealing area is reduced so I will show you a stock cylinder in comparison so stock cylinder and for a stock one this this one actually has quite a bit of taper on it but way less you have a real sharp edge now you see this gray area here that is the thickness of the nicosil so on these they have a real thick nicosil which also leads to delamination of the nicosil itself when it's too thick um, I don't know why they're doing that exactly they may be boring this same cylinder over um, in size to say a 106 millimeter instead of 105 and a half but that that taper on that edge is not good so more problems um these cylinders i've seen four or five of them now tend to crack on the exhaust side we'll see if we can get a shot of that so here we are about an inch down on the exhaust side and we have a uh, about a half inch long crack in that cylinder bore very odd kind of hard to find most of the customers will say I put a head gasket on it and it blew the head gasket again and I look at the gasket and the gasket looks fine we look at the cylinder and the cylinder itself has a crack so that may not show, show up initially on, uh, on startup it may do it when it gets hot or when it gets pressure in it but um, see a lot of issues here seeing the same exact failure uh, more than a handful of times so another issue if we look down let's see let's see how I can get the light on this to show mm, there we go look down in this bore there are abnormal marks down here where the nicosil is uneven and the rings never touch that area so even though it looked brand new coming out of the box you couldn't see that basically that's a low area in the nicosil that goes all the way around oh sorry about that let's see goes all the way around there's a low area there so poor ring sealing would happen uh, you may not notice that just be down in power a little bit different light here you can see that area that is another uh, issue, concern, failure point that uh, is common with these uh, Chinese cylinders. So poor, poor quality coating. Uh, what else do we got? Okay, on from that, sometimes we see uh, abnormal wear or out of round on these cylinders as well this one's not very bad it does have those nicosil issues down below there but we will go on to one more thing is many of these cylinders are not the proper height so if you measure the total height of the cylinder versus a stock one many of these are too tall uh, I've seen them as much as, uh, what was it, 20, I think it was like 22 thousandths too tall. The majority of them I've seen are about 10 thousandths too tall. Um, that reduces your compression, changes your uh, squish area, and many other things. Okay, um, what is next? 
Next issue we run into on these cylinders is this boss here is not, uh, it goes all the way through. It goes all the way through into the water jacket versus a stock one uh, is, uh, you can see the bottom of that one there. And this one goes straight through into the water jacket. So you do have to put a bolt in there. You do have to seal that bolt. So we just go on and on with, uh, with problems. Many of the aftermarket cylinders, you have to chase the threads um, to get a bolt to go in there smoothly all the way down without issue. Next problem we run into is some of these have a, ran into a few times here where they'll leak coolant through this water passage into the side here. Um, and it's normally into this pocket where the uh, timing chain tensioner goes, they'll leak right through there. So that has been a problem that we've seen multiple times. Um, well, let's see. Kind of a laundry list of issues. That's why we don't sell these. I don't recommend them. Uh, let's touch a little bit on uh, cylinder works components. The cylinder works components are not a, or have have been in the past, they could change, you know. Uh, everybody's open for change, but they have a sleeve. Instead of being a solid cast piece, there's a, uh, a sleeve that drops in. And that sleeve will drop down and cause uh, leakage because uh, just a round cylinder, cylindrical sleeve that's pressed into the main housing and once you run the bike it heats up and that sleeve drops down so that does happen this particular cylinder like it almost looks like it is a sleeve even though it's not because of how sharp the corners of these water jackets are compared to a stock one has nice round water jackets that uh, don't lead to uh, a stress rise area there. Okay, and on to another issue here. Stock on the left, aftermarket on the right. If we zoom in, we see When you torque down this bolt, this surface is not parallel to the deck surface. So you get an uneven clamping area that does bend that bolt. That's where you see this inner side mushroomed in more than the outside versus a stock one. That area is machined flat and you have an even distribution of the torque. Now this is a small bolt, low torque, but when you do that, you are causing uh, the cylinder to flex. Even a little bit of torque uh, bent over on a bolt is going to cause issue there. So that's another issue with these. The maybe not the last issue, but the last one I'll overview here is on the uh, on the bottom of the sleeve itself seen a variation in the actual bore sizing here but what we run across is sometimes these cylinders won't sit all the way down on the case so I always recommend to do a mock-up make sure the cylinder with the dowels and it sits all the way flat on the case or you'll have a base gasket leak and what I've ran into of how to determine or fix that is if you take a razor blade and kind of scrape into the edge here most of the time on the ones that are bad that razor blade won't fit flat and you'll start taking off a good amount of material because there's too much radius from the uh, bottom surface to the sleeve and that causes that cylinder not to sit all the way down on the bore 
Um, that is about it. I know this video is getting a little long, but that is what to look out for, uh, what to stay away from, the issues that are out there. Um, there's a lot of there's some crap focus. There's a lot of different companies trying to pass this cylinder off as their own. It all comes from the same place. So there you have it. That's my opinion on uh, cylinders and the issues that result. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, business has been crazy. I've been trying to do some videos. I've been trying to keep up on everything. It's been a little rough, but... Um, better busy than slow. So uh, that is it. We will talk to you on the next one.